Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to do a trial Z roundup for today's second video. So we're going to go through all of the trial Z model runs and see what they're showing for the uh, next couple of weeks. And I shall get right back for you in a moment. Just say that first. Uh, video sales are 6 a.m. UK. Well, before, I did do a test 14 day today. I've been offline most of the day, uh, resting my uh, eyes. Finally, I think uh, my left eye is starting to settle down. Um, the steroids are beginning to uh, get to work, but uh, still feeling a bit sore, but feeling a lot better than like uh, a day or so ago, well, last night even. So, uh, finally, I think it's heading in the right direction. Thanks so much, everyone. Please like, share, subscribe, all back to us. Uh, and Ted Walton, Dad, will be back tomorrow. Right, going to start off with the uh, UK Met Euro run, uh, I think. So, we're unable to hardly go to 72 hours. And uh, we can see that for midday on Sunday, we've got uh, a battle going on. No pressure to the west, high pressure to the east. Drawing up a general sort of uh, southerly flow there. And uh, we're going to find so relatively mild-ish. Into the beginning of next week, low pressure comes up against that blocking area of high pressure. High pressure strength, but in mode, that's how we look when we get to next Thursday. So we're poised there, aren't we? We've got 1,035 millibar Scandinavian high coming up against, and uh, low pressure coming up against that in the Atlantic. Proper on the uh, battle taking place. Is the wind beginning to bat round where the southeast? See, that's usually the first signs that the Scandinavian high is winning the battle. Wind goes southwesterly to southerly to southeasterly. So possibly something a bit colder on the east coast uh, by uh, next Thursday. Hmm, okay, well, let's go on, have a look at ICOM. So again, uh, low pressure to the west, high pressure to the east, and as on over the weekend, as we go into next week, the high pressure strengthens towards Scandinavia, it looks like it's trying to win the battle. That gets us to 180 hours, so still with a block of Scandinavia, no pressure coming up against that from off Atlantic again. Which way is that going to go? I think the Scandinavian height is just about in control of that. So quite a bit of energy in the Atlantic. But I reckon if we could roll on a couple of days beyond that, we would probably go into an easy. Need that, need that uh, energy to cut, uh, undercut south, uh, southeast. So I need to send, send, send the energy down into Biscay and into the Mediterranean. Okay, let's get the KMA up and have a quick look at that. Hold on, everyone. Okay, we'll forget that, man. The KMA hasn't updated uh, for today. That's getting a bit patchy with the updates uh, just at the moment. But anyway, we'll move on from that then. Uh, we'll go to GFS. This is how uh, the uh, GFS uh, Midnight Run... Uh, trials of Run, I should say. Talking. Let's have a look at Midnight Run. Never since September Trials so why not? So, uh, this is the... Uh, midnight GFS, first of all. Uh, low pressure coming against that blocking area of high pressure. So we're going into uh, next week. Um, we've got Scandinavian high, but we're building a ridge from the Azores high to that. Um, all sort of ends up as a last Scandinavian high there by about 216 hours, 1,050 millibars back into Western Russia. But still bringing a lot of energy in from off the Atlantic. So uh, mm, now we get through to about 300 hours, it looks like the Scandinavian high we're starting to uh, win the battle, but quickly sinking southwards. So, a uh, big wobble there from uh, the GFS, possibly hinting up more of a northerly coming in for the end of uh, January. But a big wobble there on the easterly for the GFS midnight run. What was the six they doing? Let's have a look at that one. So, uh, once again, we've got low pressure coming up against that blocking area of high pressure. Stronger with the Scandinavian high on the six then compared to Midnight Run, I think. Is this going to achieve an easterly? Mm, it gets very close to it, but again, just not quite pulling it off, are we? So, uh, eventually, you know, it's probably cold and mainly dry with that, with like a southeasterly type of, it's not like a, the classic easterly GFS was showing. And then we're back into those milder southwesters again. So quite a wobble going on today with the GFS in terms of this easterly. Let's see how the 12 set is looking. Is that going to be any better for the easterly? Well, again, we've got a battle going on between high pressure to the northeast, low pressure to the west, southwest, um, through the second half next week. High pressure over Scandinavia looks like 
it's winning the battle. But again, we keep the energy coming in from off that. And again, look at this, uh, pulling up that southwesterly flow. So around day eight, nine, it all looks quite good. But then all of a sudden, we raise the heights down towards Spain, which is often our problem to get easily through in this country. Raise heights down towards Spain. It uh, pulls down that Scandinavian height southwards. And we just end up going into a milder southwesterly type flow. Uh, that's how we look when we get to the end of the GFS trials. Everyone, flats, pancake, westerly, southwesterly, no easterly doing there. Right, so big wobble taking place within the GFS output at the moment. Let's see how the GFS is looking from a stratospheric point of view. So, uh, these are temperatures at 10 HPA over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole as well. So, uh, the blue colours there, that's a stratospheric top polar vortex uh, at its roots in the stratospheric level. So, a bit of warming taking place on either side of the pole over the uh, next few days. So, that warming strengthens over Siberia as we get through into next week. Becoming quite a pronounced warming, though not a sudden stratospheric warming event. It's shy of that. Uh, into the extended range, we find that the, uh, we get another warming, ah, now this is also interesting, another warming begins to take place over eastern America and in the North Atlantic. So that really is putting traffic polar vortex under a lot of pressure. Notice how those blue clouds are just shrinking, shrinking out. A uh, displacement event of traffic polar vortex over towards uh, western Canada, which is bit unusual. Um, that looks like it's heading for an SSW to me. A reversal of zero winds at 10 hp. Probably, probably got to go on a couple of steps, uh, straight from that warming, just a little bit more towards Canada and Greenland. And then I think we would be uh, in business for a proper sun strategic warming event and um, uh, reversal of zero wind at 10 hpa. And as I said before, like I think the SSWs that occur over Canada and the, uh, the Atlantic. Uh, tend to have a better tropospheric response for us in terms of dawn blocking Northern Europe. Not sure what the reason why it, for that is, why the reason is for that. But like, words happen over Siberia, and that's where most of them, nine times out of ten, take place. They can be, you know, very good for um, Northern Europe for blocking, as we saw in 2013, for example. But it's patchy. So sometimes they will produce uh, blocking, particularly if there's a split of the traffic polar vortex. If it's just a displace, a, a reverse of a displacement, then uh, those warnings over Siberia tend to be a bit patchy and the trust response tends not to be quite uh, dramatic. Whereas if you get a warming over um, uh, Canada and in the North Atlantic and around Greenland, uh, then you do tend to see a, a, a more um, definitive uh, trust strike response. But they're rarer and they happen, you know, uh, quite rarely. So uh, that's very interesting where the GFS is going with that. So the GFS may have wobbled with that Scandinavian high and easterly uh, for late January. But, you know, if we pull off this warming uh, the strategy, particularly if it comes to sudden stress threat one with a uh, reversal and a split, then uh, we could be looking at some very, in, very interesting conditions into February. I shall say no more than that. Uh, right, okay, well, quite interesting, this uh, video, isn't it? I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share, subscribe if you are. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Webs. Get to subscribe too. We need to put on around 20 subscribers to get ourselves to um, 21k. So it could give us stuff. That'd be amazing. And it'd be awesome. And thank you so much, for everyone, for doing that. Right, GM, again, with high pressure, needs low pressure out to the west on the uh, Monday, proper old meteorological battle uh, taking place um, through uh, next week. Well, it's the energy in the Atlantic that keeps driving in. So no Scandi, no easterly up to day 10. Uh, there is a Scandinavian high, but <laughs> uh, certainly no easterly up to day 10 there. That's the 25th of January from the GEM. And what about the ECM? How's that one? looking. So, can we get the ECM? So, let's have a look at the ECM for 240 hours. Well, let's see if we can get, get it 360 hours at Metrocella. So, again, we've got uh, low pressure, high pressure to the east through the early part 
of uh, next week, high pressure. Um, over Scandinavia, back to Western Russia, almost batting the wind into a southeasterly there uh, by the end of next week, but still with that energy coming in from off Atlantic, that's day 10, and we're still bringing the load pressures in on off Atlantic, still not definitive with that uh, blocking area of high pressure over Scandinavia. Now, if we can follow this through 360 hours, I don't know. We'll be able to, it's still a bit, uh, I should have waited half an hour later to do this video, but I wanted to get, you know, get it done. Right, I think I'm going to go there, and then I think we've got to go to uh, Northern Hemisphere, and then we are looking for that. Right, okay, I think we've got it. So this is like the Northern Hemispheric view from the east of 12 Zed Row uh, out to 360 hours. So let's start here at um, 168, if we can. So uh, there we go. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia, low pressure battling against that in the Atlantic. Again, around um, day nine, we almost get wind into a southeast, not quite. No pressure keeps on coming, though, into the extended diving southwards. So, uh, very gradually, but inside the its way into a colder pattern uh, there. It's not happening really via Scandinavian higher search. There's a bit of a ridge over Scandinavia. It's just happening by the jet stream moving southwards to bring the piece of the energy via that low southwards with it. And that starts to allow colder air to begin to pull out of the uh, Arctic. Very brief with that, though. And then we're back into those southwesterlies again by three sit downs. A big wobble has taken place. We can't get around that. A big wobble has taken place today uh, within the operational uh, runs in terms of this um, uh, easily, Scandinavian high and easily for the second half of January. Very much so. It's been like one step forward, two steps back, or two steps forward, one step back, maybe over the past week or so. I think today we can say we're taking two steps back, most definitely, uh, with this. And whether we do pull off a Scandinavian high and easterly uh, for late January, very, very much up in the air, <laughs> if you pardon the pun. Let's have a look at the GFS Ensemble, see how that 12 cent operation run fits in. So it was, well, more or less a mild outlier, at one point just here anyway, a mild outlier. Otherwise, it's at the mildest end of the range. But the trend within the GFS ensemble still seems to be quite cold, uh, actually. Still, still seems to be a downwards one, with the white line, the ensemble being uh, going underneath the uh, long-term 30-year average, which, of course, is the red line. So, mm, well, very, very inconclusive data uh, tonight, isn't it? We'll just have a look at the AI runs. Why not? Oh, some of you like uh, like a bit of AI, some of you don't. I'm not a fan of AI, personally, but I guess you've got to move with times, haven't you? So, we've got GCGM, that's the AI version of the gem. We'll start off with that one. Uh, so, again, we've got high pressure to the east, low pressure out to uh, the west as we're going into the early part of next week battle taking place. Better Scandinavian high formation uh, later next week. Pulling the wind, the ice bars around into more of a southeasterly. And uh, yeah, the east end looking a lot colder there, I think. Bringing in most of these winds, particularly to the northern half of the country. And much stronger with that Scandinavian high. So the AI GM is much better for blocking and for cold compared to its operational uh, generic model. Right, that's that one done. So we can also have a look at the um uh the let's have a look at the ECM uh AI model. So again. This is the uh, AI version of the ECM, starting at 72 hours. Battle taking place with a high pressure to the east, low pressure out to the west. Stronger again with that Scandinavian high formation, or better formation of Scandinavian high through uh, the second half of next week there with BGM. Back in the isobars around to the southeast, winds turning southeastly. Low pressure starting to undercut by day 10. We've got the energy beginning to go on a northwest southeast alignment there. Uh, so, the those southeast winds, which will already be quite cold, I think, starting to potentially undercut the low pressure, and you wouldn't rule out chance of snow uh, with that uh, scenario. Look at that, the low pressure going down to Biscay, sending it down to Biscay, and bringing the wind into a proper easterly, 
Again, so this is like the AI, so the AI Jam, more bullish for Scar Damien High and EC. The AI ECM, more bullish for Scar Damien High and EC. That is a proper EC blast there from uh, the ECM. Very, very different to uh, the ECM operational run. Let's have a look at the upper uh, temperatures with that. Look at, that. look at all that cold air sitting across northern uh, Europe. Well, we do tap into that cold air. Uh, we don't bring in the minus 10. Well, we do just about bring in minus 10 Celsius isotherm there actually, um, into the closing days of January. So, bitterly cold with snow showers into uh, the east. That's how we look when we get to the 30th of January. So, still cold. How strange. Uh, both models uh, stronger with the blocking and the Scandinavian high being easily their AI versions compared to their operational versions. But we've also got the GFS. And this will be the end of the video. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. And uh, we'll back you a regular 10 or 14 day uh, tomorrow. GFS AI run. Finally, so again, battle, let battle commence uh, through next week. High pressure in Scandinavia, low pressure out to the Atlantic. Again, I think we see, look at that. We see that the GFS um, AI run is much stronger with that blocking area of high pressure compared to its operational run. That's 180 hours. Compare that to uh, the standard GFS at 180 hours. And it's chalk and cheese, really. I mean, Scandinavia high is there, but it's not really developed properly. And certainly no real hint of an east. It's probably quite chilly under uh, this slack flow. But, like, it's very, very different from the operation run to that. So, um, well, what's going on here? I wonder. Uh, have the AI runs got this right? Well, check this out. We go further on towards uh, days 9 and 10. And we bring in a proper east. And that's been bitterly cold air in from the east as well. I think lots of heavy snow showers and maybe long spells of snow would be piling in from the east on those unstable easterly winds. Goodness gracious me. Um, also, retrogression. <laughs> high pressure going towards Greenland as well. Uh, beyond day 10. Just keeping things cold in the south anyway. A little bit of moderation coming into the north. But that is a very much colder uh, GFS AI run compared to operational run. Um, this is how the upper air temperatures, sorry, this is how the upper air temperatures are looking finally. Wow, check that out. So my tensile sides are flooding in uh, from the east. Bitterly cold air coming in on those east and north east winds there. That is a hint of a beach from the east, I have to say. And we would have lots of every social coming in on those easterly, northeasterly winds as well. Maybe even some longer spells of snow and whatnot. Keeping it cold with the upper air temperatures in the south, anyway, until the very end of it. It's starting to go a bit less cold up in the north. Gosh, so that's funny, isn't it? So the operational uh, model runs, the GFS, the GEM, and the ECM, are wobbling, have wobbled quite substantially, I have to say, uh, taking two steps back uh, with this scanning high and easily. Their AI counterparts, though, are looking much better uh, and probably taking two steps forward for the Scandinavian high. I mean, easy. So how is this going to play out? Is it the operational generic models that have got this right? Or is it the AI runs uh, and the AI versions that have got this right? I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen. It's going to be very exciting to follow this through over the next day or so and see how it all plays out. It's operational versus AI. Um, no, uh, artificial intelligence versus the operational models. We shall see what happens. Watch this place, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> okay, we're wrapping up there. Thank you so much, everyone. Been a cracking video, this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and we're going to be back tomorrow with 6 a.m. forecast, 10, 14 day. Uh, and, of course, it's Friday, so maybe we'll do Pub Run Live. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see. All right, you enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. And for this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.